Okay, so, so far we've assumed that there are no cash flows in and out of the portfolio, right? But what if they, we have cash flows in and out of the portfolio? How do we measure returns then? Well, when we consider investments over a period during which cash was either added to or withdrawn from the portfolio, measuring the rate of return becomes slightly more difficult, right? So let's do an example. So suppose you buy a share of stock at time zero, let's say at $50. Right, let's say this is time, right? Okay, so at zero, you buy your first share at $50, right? And then you buy another share, let's say, a year, a year later, right? Buy a second share at $53, okay? So you can think of these as your cash outlays, right? Okay, let's suppose that in addition, right, you collect two dollars in dividends at t equals one, right, from the first share that you bought, right, and then at t equals two, you get four dollars in dividends because now you have two shares, okay? And let's say that at the end of the second year, right, you also sell your shares at $54 per share, right? So you collect a total of $108, right? So how do you find your rate of return? All right, so these are your you will, your cash inflows, right? Your cash outlays, your cash inflows, right? Well, we can find the average return of over the two years by using the same, right, notion as the discounted cash flow method, right? What do we do? Well, we e equate the present value of the cash inflows to the present value of the outflows, right? So what does that equal to? Well, you bought one share at time uh, zero, and then you bought another share at time one, right? So discounted, that gives you the value at uh, zero. So these, that's the present value of your cash outflows. What is the present value of your cash inflows? Well, you received $2 at the end of year one, right? And then you received four dollars in dividends and you sold your two shares at the end of year two, right? And if you sold for R, you're going to find that it is 7.117 percent, right? This is of course what we call the, what we've seen before, the internal rate of return or the IRR uh, of the investment, right? And we sometimes call this the dollar weight of return. It is called the dollar weight of return because the stock's performance in the second year, right, when you have two shares, has a greater influence on the average overall return. So what is your time weighted or your geometric average return? Well, let's think about it. Your first year return is what? Well, you Collected $53, well, you, your, val, your share is now worth at the, at the end of year one, $53. You collected the dividend, right? You spent $50 on it, divided by 50, right? That gives us 10%, right? So that's the return over the first year. What is your return over the second year? Well, your second year, it's, you got $54, you collected $2 in dividends, you had bought it at $53, right? So that's 5.66%, right? So what's your average return? Well, let me write over here the time weighted return, right? So it's going to be 1 plus 10% times 1 plus 5.66%, right? That's over two periods, so I'm going to take the square root of that minus one, 
and that gives me 7.81%. Right? So that is your time-weighted return or your geometric average return. Right? Notice that I computed the, the per-period returns, compounded them, and took the geometric average, which is different than the, the dollar-weighted average return. All right, so in this lecture, we reviewed measuring returns, right? The performance of an investment is measured by its return. However, there are several ways of calculating a, a, a rate of return. In this lecture, you learn the definition, the computation, and the different purposes for a variety of return measures.